In this video, we're going to talk about creating community and setting expectations during the first day of a group class. In addition to starting the first lesson, there are three goals for a first day of a group class. Create a sense of community, set expectations, and explore the book. It can be challenging to accomplish these things when you may not know how many students you'll have, and students may arrive throughout the class. This video will show you how to accomplish your goals while taking these challenges into account. Now let's talk about creating a sense of community. Welcome each student as they join the class, even if they come late, and make sure they get a name tag or a name tent. You'll want to collect these each day. To help students get to know each other, we recommend doing three different icebreakers throughout the class, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, so that even those who arrive late get a chance to know everyone. In between the icebreakers, you'll be working on the first lesson. Here's a sample agenda to give you an idea. Don't forget to write it on the board. As you can see, the agenda is designed so that even a student who arrives for the last 15 minutes of class gets the most important information. Before we continue, here are three icebreaker activities that work well on the first day of class for intro to level 5 students. I'll go over the examples with intro students in mind, but these can also be used for higher level students. Icebreaker activity number one, the name circle. Have everyone stand in a circle and have a ball in your hands. Say your name three times and have the class repeat it three times. Then, pass the ball to the left and do the same thing. Repeat until everyone has gone. Now you can start again and play the memory game. In this game, the first person says their name. Then the second person says the first person's name and their own. Then the third person repeats the first two names and says their own until you get all the way back to the first person. Finally, have students say someone's name and then toss the ball to that person. This game works well for all levels. Icebreaker activity number two, snowball fight. Take a break toward the middle of class. When everyone comes back, have the students write down their names or three facts on a piece of paper and wad them up into a ball. Split the class in half facing each other and have them do a snowball fight, throwing the balls of paper at each other. After about 30 seconds, have the students pick up the ball closest to them and find the person whose name they have by asking each person, what's your name? Or by finding the person that corresponds to the three facts that are on the piece of paper. Once everyone has been found, have the students introduce each other to the class. Icebreaker number three. At the end of your first lesson, you can use the final activity in lesson one, connect with conversation in levels one through five, or activity K in the intro book, as your final icebreaker. Since the lesson one is a review, you don't have to finish the lesson to use the connect with conversation activity, or activity K in the intro book. Before students start, write some questions on the board. These can even be elicited from students if you have time. Tell students in levels 1 through 5 to introduce themselves first. For intro students, the speaking activity is introducing themselves. Then, have them start the conversation. Ask students to switch partners two to three times. And end the activity with enough time for students to introduce their last partner to the class. For intro level, this will just mean pointing to the other student and saying his or her name. As always, make sure to model the activity for them first. After the first icebreaker, you'll want to set some expectations for your students. Pick three things you think are important and make them as simple as possible. For example, one expectation can be around making mistakes. It's not just good to make mistakes, they're a necessary part of learning and students should feel comfortable making mistakes in class. Another expectation might be making sure that students are comfortable asking questions. 
and perhaps a third could be to make sure that students are having fun. For higher level students, you can make this more of a discussion by asking, why is it important, after each one. Since students are arriving throughout the class, write them on the board so that you can refer back to these expectations at the end of class. For an intro class, you might want to let them use Google Translate if needed. During your first class, you'll also want to start exploring the book. Have students fill out the front cover with their name and your name and your telephone number. For lower levels, give them a sentence that they can use to text you if they can't come to class and have them write it in their books. Next, have students look at the table of contents so that they can see how many lessons there will be and what will be covered. Then, start the lesson. If you don't have time for everything on the first day, that's okay. The first lesson should be a review for them. Just make sure to go over the vocabulary and grammar points, and don't forget to assign the homework page to help students get into the habit of doing it. Since it's a review, don't restart the lesson when students arrive late. You can just keep going. Remember, the first day of class is tricky. There are so many unknowns, and both you and the students are often nervous. Don't worry if it feels a little bit rough. That's normal, even for experienced teachers. Just focus on making students feel welcome. Here are some other helpful tips as you work through the first weeks of your group class. Continue to do icebreakers for the first two weeks, as students are still getting to know each other. Be sure to have students introduce themselves each time they work with a partner. At the second class, see who can remember the three expectations from the first class. Then leave them up or put them up for the next two weeks if you aren't allowed to leave things up in the room. Write your phone number up on the board for the first two weeks so that students who join later have it. You may even want to have students practice sending you a text saying that they can't come to class. Cover the tools in the back of the book the second or third day of class. It'll make more sense after they've done a lesson or two. Be sure to have a good warm-up that works with one student or five, as students may arrive late. We hope you enjoyed this video about helpful tips for your first group class. Please feel free to contact us with any questions. Have a great first class, and remember to have fun.